everyone, my name is Scott, and uh, today I'm going to share my experience of Verizon 5G home internet for the first three months. And I'm going to cover in particular three things, uh, the speed, the quality, and the reliability. And I'm going to share some data with you as well, like the chart uh, on the left. If you haven't already seen my first video, uh, check it out. That's where I um, describe getting it all set up, my initial experience with it. Um, I, talk about speeds, I talk about streaming TV, which has worked great, um, and also using it every day uh, for Zoom meetings as well uh, for work. So check out that video. This is more of a follow-up um, telling you about the, just the longer term experience over the last three months. Um, I have uh, the C-band cube shaped router, uh, the ASCII model in particular. Um, so I'm not talking about the millimeter, millimeter wave unit on the right, which um, you're actually much less likely to get. You're much more likely to get one of the cube ones on the left. In order for this to work, uh, your local Verizon tower needs to have one of these little boxes that I've highlighted on uh, the right. And Verizon are actually spending $5 billion uh, this year and uh, going into next year and rolling out this coverage. And just in the last three months alone, they've launched 5G home internet in a bunch of cities uh, across different parts of the US. And it's already available in at least 30 million homes. But the message here is if you don't have it yet, if you can't get it yet, um, just keep checking their website because things are constantly uh, changing and expanding. So, uh, by the way, you can use the Cube standalone. It's a built-in Wi-Fi router all of itself. Um, but in my case, um, after the initial um, you know, period with it, I decided to get it set up with my existing router and uh, access point. And if you want to use your own network networking equipment, you can do that. Um, you just turn on something called IP pass-through mode. So let's take a look at the speeds. I haven't filtered these. These are just all the ones that I've done um, in the last few months. Um, and the download is, is shown in blue, uh, upload shown in red. Uh, download peaks at 300 uh, megabits, and the upload is uh, limited to 20. Um, Verizon do this. They say that they've got way more capacity, um, and they, they may increase speeds down the line as they continue to build out the network. Um, these speeds uh, were done uh, uh, right at the start when I first got it. I had it positioned right by a window. Um, and, and that's why it was performing really, really well. Um, more recently, uh, here uh, to, on the right-hand side, I've moved it away from the window, just put it in a more convenient location, and it's not quite as fast, but it's almost, it's pretty much always over 200 or around that uh, download. And as you can see, the upload is very consistent. Um, it's nearly always 20 meg um, upload, which is really good. Like cable companies and their uh, a lot of their plans um, usually only offer five or 10 meg upload. Um, so 20 is, is pretty good, especially at this price point. Um, you'll notice some, some really uh, lower results here. This is when I was sort of moving uh, the, the device around the house and just trying to see, you know, um, I have it upstairs normally, but how does it work downstairs and away from a window? Um, surprisingly, it still works really well. Um, so, you know, that's that's been great. Like, I, I'm just over half a mile from, from a tower, so I'm pretty close. Um, but, uh, you know, when I check the bars on the device, it's only one or two bars. So um, it's really very consistent. Um, especially uh, recently, uh, these tests were all done in the last sort of month or so. Um, back here, you notice that these were pretty slow download speeds. This is something I noticed um, at night. Um, you know, it's, it's often the case that uh, residential connections get slow at night um, because everyone's streaming and using uh, the internet, of course. Um, so I was getting about 100-ish um, in the evenings initially, um, but, but more recently, uh, you know, that's 11 p.m. getting 200. That was uh, just after 6 o'clock uh, getting 180. Um, 10 o'clock, it's, it's just become much more um, consistent. And uh, so perhaps they've um, you know added more capacity. Now let's look at connection quality. I used a tool called Firebind, which runs a test every 15 minutes and checks packet loss, latency, and jitter. These are the three metrics that really give, uh, you know, that really tell you whether you've got a good connection or not. So let's take a look at um, packet loss. Um, this means that data is not getting to the internet or you're not getting data from the internet and so you want it to be zero. And uh, you know, bearing in mind that there's a test running every 15 minutes, so it's uh, almost 100 tests every day, you can see that for the most part, uh, there is zero packet loss whatsoever. And that's exactly what you want to see. Occasionally, there's uh, a spike. This is a single test. Um, here's one that peaked at 5% upload loss. Maybe I was running a speed test simultaneously as that was running, I don't know. But these results are extremely good. So no problems at all there. Um, latency uh, or ping is very important, especially for gamers. Um, this is uh, pinging to a, a server in California. I'm in Las Vegas. Um, weirdly, for the first sort of, this is, by the way, a week, um, for the first day or so, the ping was quite a bit higher and then it dropped. Um, so who knows why that was. Um, but, you know, I found it very responsive and really no issues at all. Lastly, 
um, JITs are, uh, is a measure of are, is the data getting there in order or not? Uh, and if it's not getting in order, you know, how many milliseconds is it delayed by? And you see that there is pretty constant jitter, but it is generally very low. It's between about two and four um, milliseconds for the most part. Um, and you know anything really less than 30 is good. So I haven't noticed any issues. Streaming TV has been great. Uh, Zoom meetings have been great as well. So really no issues here with the quality of the connection. Last thing we want to look at is um, the uh, uptime and the reliability. So let's take a look. These logs actually come from my TP-Link router and it's measuring the um, connection and every time it goes down um, it records that and then it records when it comes back up again. And as you can see roughly once a day um, it was dropping for about 13 seconds. I believe that's when it's renewing the IP address uh, and the IP address was changing. So uh, this is something that used to happen once every day after the firmware was updated. It happens, happens on average roughly once every two days um, but it is only for 13 or 14 seconds at a time. Um, I hope that Verizon are going to fix it. Um, you know, it's not it's not terrible by any means. I calculated that's uh, an uptime of 99.9925, which is not bad at all. It's uh, it's just over three minutes of downtime uh, a month. But you know, that could be really annoying if if it's in the middle of a meeting or maybe in the middle of a game. Um, so yeah, that's that's the only that's been the only blemish. Otherwise, Verizon 5G Home is awesome. Great price, great speeds. Um, great reliability and consistency uh, with just this one little thing. And I, I hope they, they can figure it out. Um, we'll see. It costs $50 a month uh, normally, um, but if you're on the right cell phone plan, it's as little as $25 a month. Um, there is no contract, so you can cancel at any time. It's very low risk. If it doesn't work out for you, just cancel. So thanks for watching. Um, you know, if you didn't watch my original video, go to my channel and find that. Um, I think you'll find it useful. And if you enjoyed this video, please like. Also consider subscribing if you're into uh, smart home tech, uh, DIY projects. Um, you'll find uh, my channel interesting, I hope. Thanks for watching.